What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Berman. Today we are hitting the VGC regulation F ranked ladder with this Alolan Persian team. Before we begin, if you wouldn't mind liking, commenting, subscribing, helping this re video reach more people, helping the channel grow, I sure would appreciate that. Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is typically when I stream. Come by if you want to battle against me or at least get some practice in with Regulation F. There's people battling against each other in the chat all the time. It's a lot of fun. 7 p.m. sharp if you want to battle me or you won't get a spot. Let's talk about this team very quickly. I am an Alolan Persian apologist. I really like this Pokemon and I think that it's something that is just like outclassed. It's not the best fake out user in the world, not the best snarl user in the world, it's not the best ice see wind user in the world. It's not the best focus sash lead in the world, but there are situations in which it is incredibly useful because it gets all of these things, right? And the fact that it gets technician is one of its abilities. It's got a couple of great abilities. Let's, let's be honest, because fur coat is another one that can really help it be actually far bulkier. So you don't need the focus sash. But right now we're talking about the technician set that I have right in front of you. All of these attacking moves are boosted by technician. So snarl will do a little bit more. I see wind will do a little bit more. Definitely fake out will do a little bit more, although it is a special attack set, don't get crazy. And Parting Shot can't even be prankster taunted for the fact that Persian is a dark type. We forgive it for what its facial construction is because it's a really fun Pokemon to use. Fun fact, I actually found a shiny Alolan Meowth in my first playthrough, first like two hours of Sun and Moon. And so, you know, warm place in my heart used in my whole playthrough. Uh, the rest of the team is good stuff. I, I have been using a lot of gimmicky teams lately and I wanted to be like, no, let's do something that actually is gonna like work consistently and doesn't require a gimmick. It's just that Persian is a really good Pokemon to support the rest of the team. So you have one Intimidator on the team, but you have uh, Breaking Swipe as another way of reducing attack on your opponents. You have Snarl on the Persian to reduce special attack, Icy Wind. All of these things are manual besides the Landorus with Intimidate uh, on ways to decrease your opponent's important stats while everything on the team deals pretty massive damage no matter which attack you're using from which pokemon they all sort of have some some damage output with the exception of like the flutter main everybody also has like a little bit of utility as well which is pretty cool and fun and makes you feel less bad when you're using it because it kind of feels like in many situations like you kind of can't make a wrong decision here instead of worrying about making the right decision at team preview that's the team i'm very excited to use it today like comment subscribe hit the buttons before we begin and without any further ado let's hop into some battles here shall we pretty standard stuff from no bank Uh huh. Okay. Uh, the potential tailwind. We're bringing a lull in Persian to every game. I I already feel that. I I brought it to every practice game. So I, I wanna I wanna stand by it. They don't have any defiant mons, which means that uh actually Landorus is pretty on the table. Don't hate that. Let's go there. Um. I think I like my King Gambit. Everything gets hit by Sucker Punch pretty good, besides the Urshifu. And then I think Ogre Pond's gonna join us as well. Yeah. I'm thinking through what I'm going to do if they get Tailwind up, or if I should just let them try to get Tailwind up. Um, are people still running Covert Cloak on their Tornadus, or do you think that I can fake it out? Jesus, look at this guy's hair. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. This is exactly why I brought my Intimidator. Let's fake out the Rilla. 
I'm also going to U-turn off of the Rilla. We should go first here in both accounts. I think I can pretty easily go into King Gambit here. Right, they just fake out Lando. Yeah, it tracks. So I think I might actually double. Uh, I can fake, I can parting shot off of the... I really don't think they're going to flare blitz into the lander slot. So I'm going to parting shot off of the Rillaboom. I'm also going to U-turn off of the Rillaboom. You know what? I can cover for this. If I parting shot off of the Incineroar and I U-turn off of the Rillaboom, maybe if they do flare blitz into... Incin just did that into... Okay. It was hard to tell who was helping handing there. I don't think Rillaboom gets helping hand. Or else I think you'd see it sometimes. And what's great about this play is I can now parting shot and get another Intimidate by going straight back into the Lando. And on this next turn, I don't even face uh, another threat of fake out. I love a team that has some real nice pivoting options. They would hammer into the Lando slot, but thankfully, because of those um, that double intimidate factor, uh, we're going to take that okay. Um, they have a lot of Pokemon that are like flying, potentially, so I think my best play is just to I mean, I could U-turn again. I'm kind of feeling that. Um, and I can also just... I think Iron Head is the play into that spot. They're going to Helping Hand again. If it's Grassy Glide, then that'll suck. Okay. And despite the... Minus two. They will get the KO on Lando. It's not It's not the end of the game or anything crazy like that. We'll trade our Lando for their Rillaboom. I'm fine with that. Especially because Ogre Pond can come in now and actually is a really good candidate for Terra. Rillaboom was kind of the biggest issue for this team. Uh, for, or for, for Ogre Pond's Terra ability on this team. Man, it got dark behind me. Could still be seen with the camera, right? I'm recording at that time of day where it's just getting a little late. All right, there's the torn. Uh, I do definitely want a Terra now. Uh, let's just do that and Ivy Cudgel into that spot. And I think I can easily just. I mean, can Gambit can actually switch? No. No, I can stay in and just kowtow the, the torn spot. We're going to go Water Terra now because it also helps us uh, not... We're going to go from not weak... Or sorry, we're going to go from weak to the Bleak Windstorm to all of a sudden not weak to it and also having a special defense boost. Seems pretty good to me. They're also going to Terra now. Man, that guy that guy's whole style is crazy. They're gonna tear grass, so great play for my opponent. Doesn't change the fact that they're at minus um they're at minus three with the Incineroar, and if they switch it out to reset, they also risk activating Defiant on King Gambit once they come back out. Bleak one's gonna miss Ogrepon entirely, so that's great. Give me the speed drop here. Nope. That is a minus three flare blitz right there. So I can't say that I care much about that. 
Grassy terrain's only helping me now. Okay, let's Ivy Cudgel the Torn Spot now. Uh, I'm gonna switch my target onto the Incineroar here with the with the Kowtow. I love the position that I've forced the Incineroar into at this point. Uh, it really has a hard time justifying being on the field and also has to be very scared of, uh, you know, leaving the field and coming back on. They're just going to keep going for King Gambit. That's okay. As long as King Gambit has health, they can always sucker punch. It's kind of how I feel. Okay, Ensign is going to die to... Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Scratch that immediately. No more grass. The Lando is what's in the back. I don't hate that. Let's, uh, let's follow me here. I'm just going to kowtow the Lando here first. I think that my Ogre Pond makes it out of this turn. No problem. I don't think we even lose our Ogre Pond here. And we still have a fake out user in the back. Like, I, I feel pretty confident that I can stall out Tailwind. And then we can be in a situation where Persian with Icy Wind at the end of the game would just win it, right? Because doesn't Alolan Persian outspeed Lando? Let me confirm that. Alolan Persian on max speed is base 115. Might be tight. Landorus is 101. We got it. They went for the helping hand here. If it's uh, the Sandseer Storm, that could be more annoying. It is, but it's going to miss something. It's going to miss the Ogre Pond. Not the one I wanted it to miss. I'll be honest with you. It is okay. We still have a fully Focus Sash intact Alolan Persian here. Uh, we got two more turns of Tailwind to burn. We might need both of them. We can Ivy Cudgel the Lando and fake it out this turn, I think. Or should I fake out the Incineroar? Assuming that the Lando is going to protect. Don't hate that. If it doesn't, it's a problem, though. No, I can do it. I can do it. I think I can do this because I think that the Ivy Cudgel drops the Lando. If it doesn't, that's an issue. What I couldn't, what I didn't want to have happen there. Oh, we take that Sludge Bomb all day. What I didn't want to have happen there was they protect the Lando. I double into it, and then they get a Flare Blitz and do a uh, Alolan Persian which would make it so that Alolan Persian has its Sash broken. Even if they were to kill Ogre Pond in that turn, as long as I have my Sash intact, I can Icy Wind twice. Does that make sense? So I feel anyway. Writing is on the wall. They're still at minus three the entire game. It's like turn two. Good game to my opponent. Uh, really, really happy with how the team performed there, I'll be honest. And, uh, you know, I think Alolan Persian's a pretty big part of really crippling that uh, that Incineroar at the end of the day. You know? With that parting shot. Really reliable, quick, quick Pokemon. Good game. Someone's in the kitchen with... Pretty standard team. Some stuff over there that are definitely, uh, you know, commonly seen. Uh, but I like the fact that, yeah, I like Persian here. I would honestly, I don't like leading King Gambit because I like leading with speed and then having King Gambit in the back to finish things up. I still don't think I'm going to lead King Gambit, but right here I am tempted to. 
I think that right now, what's probably best for me is just leading with my own Fluttermane. My own uh, uh, Alolan Persian. Not that my opponent has one. Couching Fire feels like it could be pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my own King Gambit. Again, not that they have one. I don't know why I keep saying that. And yeah, we'll bring the Gauging Tire. Like I said in the intro, I, I'm like sitting here like, what is actually best? But none of my like thought processes are going to, oh no, I can't bring that, right? Which feels good. Obviously, there's things that are like better against other stuff than, you know, like I don't want to bring my Landorus if I know for 100% sure they're going to bring their Chen Pao. Like Landorus does not have a great matchup against Chen Pao, but it's got other support and it's good against other stuff on the. What, what am I even? I'm really I'm just saying to you, I think this is a user friendly team. I think that really summarizes what my thoughts are. All right. Yeah, definitely not bad. So what we can do here is just fake out the Chen Pao. I don't need to Terra yet because I'm just going to D-Gleam. I think there's a better chance that the if something's Covert Cloak here, it's going to be the Whimsicott, not the Chen Pao. If they Ghost Terra... Okay, they are going to Terra something. All right. Well, there you go. Can they one-shot my Fluttermane after a Tailwind? I'm glad I didn't Terra because that would have potentially been even worse here. Yeah, this there's no bulk in this Flutter. Yeah, it should drop. Oh, and it's Life Orb as well. Okay, well, glorious. I mean, Sucker Punch hard threatens that thing now. Yeah. I feel like it's pretty obvious that I'm going to Sucker Punch here. So I kind of want to get, like, a little crazy read-wise. And I can Parting Shot off of this slot and actually just Iron Head here. Do I feel like I want to offset that with a fairy terror just in case? Um, I think I think so. I will offset that just in case they do stay in in Sacred Sword. I'll be a little careful. The Focus Sash now is still fully, potentially, on the Whimsicott, though. Oh, I made the read. It would have been so cool if I didn't, Terra. But hey, now I'm not weak to fire. That's neat. And I do not hate this uh, this parting shot off of their gouging fire. Ooh, the sunny day. Boosting the gouging fire's attack. All right, well, sit back down. If I can get rid of the Whimsicott here, I'd love that, because then I can Breaking Swipe for super effective on them. I'm a speed boost in Gouging Fire. That's why, that's why I'm saying that. I got to stall out the Tailwind, too. <laughs> yep, there's the Focus Sash. Two more turns of Tailwind. All right. We can Burning Bulwark for one turn. Um, I 
I always get in this situation, whenever it's Trick or Mort's Tailwind and there's two turns left, I'm always like, no. They're going to protect on the last turn. So we can... I'm going to do that, and I'll switch Persian in here. I think if I'm my opponent, I'm actually just like using a fire move into the King Gambit slot. If they go for a dragon move, though, I absolutely deserve that. They Moonblast into Gouging Fire there. And they do go for a move into the Persian. Nito. Okay. All right. All right. There's Chen Pao. Once King Gambit's back on the field, though, I don't got to worry about Chen Pao at all. I think I can just Burning Bullock for one turn. Um, And I could Icy Wind to reduce their speed. I'm not totally concerned about their speed, if I'm honest. Um, I might just Parting Shot off the Chen Pao. Do you Parting Shot off the Chen Pao here, or do you Parting Shot off of the... Gouging fire. I think you go off the. Uh, mm. It's kind of a kind of a crapshoot there. Oh wow, they switched out the gouging fire. Okay, what's their last mon? It's the Urshifu. Let's see if I'm uh, very happy to have gone for this burning bullock here. No. I'm actually very sad I didn't attack, in fact. All right, petered out. I made the read once into that King Gambit, or with the King Gambit. I should move first here. I think I may howl. And go for a Brick Break through the Urshifu. Is Brick Break stronger than Iron Head? Yes, should be. So I'll do that. This way, if they Sucker Punch into the Gouging Fire, they actually won't get anything from it. I have this Chen Pao's number. You cannot deny me that. I do have this Chen Pao's number. Oh, and Gouging Fire lived that. That's insane. Oh, they're for sure going down. They got the defense drop before. Okay, cool. All right. I feel like I'm I'm playing really well here. To stay in this. Not not that this is over by any means. Uh, we still have some mind games to, to go through here. If the Chen Pao has Sucker Punch, it can do that into my Gouging Fire and then avoid me, right? Harsh Sunlight is up for one more turn. I think I can Burning Bullock for one turn to avoid the Sucker Punch kill. Uh, but I don't think that I can Sucker Punch. Uh, if they Sucker Punch, then I need to Kowtow here. And I need to not die to these moves. I need to not die to like a flare blitz boosted by the sun in the, you know, all that stuff. Dude, I have this Chen Pao's number. I, I really, really do. I needed them to get that wrong. Yeah, if I, if, yeah. <sighs> I 
I don't know that there was a better play in that last turn that I could have gone for. Um, I needed to Burning Bulwark with... Yeah, I needed the Burning Bulwark with, uh, like, could I have Sucker Punched their Gouging Fire? I don't think it would have killed it, right? And then then there's no way out of that. I think maybe my opponent just had me. I think I'd have to back up a couple of turns to see if there was something I could have done to change the outcome there. Really great game, though. I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all because I do think I made some really great reads in that game that I can hang my hat on. Um, even if we didn't, we didn't take it home. Two games my opponent. Okay. Dread Cop has some theming happening here. I gotta say. I'm a fan. Uh yeah, got all three of the of the Kanto starters. Got Tinkaton, which, if you know me lately in Regulation F, pretty big Tinkaton advocate. I think that Pokemon's really, really good right now. That hit him on top, which I haven't seen. Hit him on top, unfortunately, came in at the same time as Incineroar uh, and does a lot of the same stuff. Uh, but it's kind of cool. I also like to see it because I think that means King Gambit has a better time potentially. Though King Gambit doesn't have a good as good a time with some of the stuff lower down. All right, let's leave with the Persian. I feel like Landorus has a really great matchup in this game. Yeah, we can leave with the Lando there. I don't think Fluttermane has the best matchup, to be honest with you. I think Ogre Pond's great. And I kind of just want to use gouging fire because uh i don't know if you've been watching the regionals lately but gouging fire has shocked the world i think that when the indigo disc dropped and people were starting to use the, the you know the, the new paradox pokemon they were like okay going in you know at least this was my opinion like walking wake is going to be ridiculous that thing is the ultimate sun pokemon no paradox mon is going to cover that it's going to get close to that thing in usage and then we realized, like, oh my god. We got, like, Raging Bolt stats, and we found out what Thunderclap really did and all that stuff, and we were like, holy cow, this thing is gonna be nuts. And in a bunch of the regionals this past month, let me tell you something, people have cracked Gouging Fire, and this Pokemon is insanely good. Way better than when I first used it. How I was using it. Uh, we could just fake out you, and I'm gonna go for a Rock Slide immediately. This feels like Pledge nonsense, if I'm honest. Goodbye. Don't tell me that was your whole thing. Don't tell me that's all you had. Kanto guy. Gen 1-er. A Gen 1-er after my own heart. You're just going to let... Come on, man. So we parting shot the blast toys here. We go into the Ogre Pond, assuming that they're going to go for a water move. Um, and just like we did in that first game, I think that I can maybe go right back into the Lando to get an Intimidate onto the Tankaton. But I think Ogre Pond comes in here with really no like reason to be scared at all. Those are the chances we just get faked out right now. in the uh, Persian slot. They went Terra Water. I'm feeling a Water Spout. I don't know about you. They fake out the Ogre Pond there. So we will get this parting shot here. I'm gonna go into Gouging Fire. This is just going to be a neutral water move into me, but I think they're going to give the water move into the Ogre Pond spot. That was a Landorus at the beginning of this turn. They do go for Water Spout. They are missing HP, so it's not going to deal the full amount. 
They're also Terra Waters. So this and and they're minus one special attack. Oh, gouging fire ate that up. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We can do that. I love the little Hal tech. I was never a huge fan of using Hal, to be honest. It was popular on Arcanine a little while ago. Woo. Gouging Fire is really good at it, because if you go with a speed boosting Gouging Fire, you can get Hal a lot. That was a quick claw that just activated on the Tinkaton, and then they missed a Stone Edge. That is a uh, nat 20 on initiative into a nat 1 on the, uh, on the first roll. Whenever I'm in like a good mood, I start fidgeting with this little pen. You've probably noticed. You watch these videos. But um, sometimes I like flip it. And oftentimes I don't catch it. Heat crunch. Heat crunch. Heat crash the tink a ton. Gouging fire is the fastest thing on the field right now. And we Ivy cudgel the Lando. I think. I don't want to get overzealous here. We might just win. I probably should have Terra watered the Ogre Pond here just to cover for a potential like Sludge Bomb. <laughs> they do get the Quick Claw activating again. They're going to hit the Stone Edge this time. But they still can't catch Gouging Fire out. Tinkathon's going to get schmacked. Sorry, my friend. And actually, the Ogre Pond, which is, this is not even a speedy Ogre Pond, is going to outspeed their Lando. And at plus one, you're gone. Yeah, I should have Terra Watered Ogre Pond there, but other than that, I feel like 100% great about every move that I made in that game. Not too bad. Good game to my opponent. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you want to use this really solid, solid, probably my most solid feeling team in a while, uh, Alolan Persian team, be my guest, rental code, pokey paste, full team breakdown, always in the description, uh, except for when I forget, and then it's on a different computer, and then I do have to update it uh, later on, and I forget to update it for when the video initially premieres, and people in the comments are very kind the requesting the pokey paste i do apologize when that happens it just recently happened i'm sorry i'm sorry it should be there i hope thanks so much for clicking on this video in the first place i do appreciate it uh i definitely used this team last night on the stream um but right now i am before the stream as i'm recording this so hopefully it did well hopefully that means that you watched the video i know the lolan persian doesn't seem like the most exciting pokemon in the world but i really love showcasing what that dumb little round-faced cat can do from time to time. And I think it might be really, really good right now. That's all I got for you. Hit the buttons on the way out. And until next time, my name is Berm. See you later.